Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky here with Blue Cat Studio. Um, today we are going to unbox, whoopsie daisy, sorry, I'm trying to set up a time lapse here so we can see this also. Okay, so we're going to unbox and unpackage what a two pack of sleds look like. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint one. So if you order the two pack of sleds from me, it comes in a, obviously a very cute blue wrapper. <clears throat> And I ship them, they're 67 a piece. And of course, I'm not really selling here. I'm just trying to show you what we've got. All right, so here's the pack. Woo! All that bubble wrap to protect it. And then inside, you will find runners for two. There we go, those are set and those are a set. One side's a little bit, It's these are all laser cut, so it has that kind of burn mark look on it. And so if we assemble one of these, it's going to look like this. Let's see here. Yep. Okay. So when you look at this, oh, I, you know, I get this, I get this confused, but there's a long end and the short end. So the short end is the front. You place it in just like so. And then this guy goes in just like so. Now again, these are cool for assembling and disassembling if you need to store them or if you want them forever in place, you can just, um, you can just glue them. And so this is pretty much what your, what the sleds are going to look like as they come. Look at that. Isn't that cute? So it's a full 18 inches from here to here, maybe actually a little bit more. Um, okay. So that's what they look like assembled. Super cute. When you order a two pack, you get two, they're all broken down. You can put them together. And so here's the second one. Hey Candy, how you doing? I have pre-traced a design on this guy already so that we can literally just get started. But if you're curious, well, how does that all work? You know, I can provide you with a traceable design for download and it would be pre-sized. And then you just get yourself some carbon paper for the transfer and kind of place it down and then just roughly go over it with like a ballpoint pen. And that's kind of how that's done. But that's pretty boring to watch, maybe maybe in double speed. So here we have it um, pre-traced. So let's go ahead and get started with some navy blue. Um, and I really like the Decoart Americana Deep Midnight Blue, but any old navy will do. This one's a folk art. Um, I also love Prussian blue, so I'm just gonna go with this guy because I've got lots of it. In fact, let's just kind of drizzle some blue paint on right there. Now, some of my design I may not be able to see afterwards, and that's okay. We're going to grab a chip brush. This is a two inch chip brush, absolute favorite there. And we'll just begin by kind of working our way across the top here. Just kind of getting some basic coverage going. And of course you're gonna cover your work surface. That way you don't, that way you don't mess it up. Now I can still see my tracing through here, which is great kind of working our way down a little bit and notice it's starting to get a little softer and that's good I'm not adding more paint because now we're going to come in and use some pewter and this is a uh, deco art metallics or um, you could also I believe the pewter comes in the smaller versions like this this is the extreme sheen deep sapphire I'm not a hundred percent sure if I want to go with sapphire although that's got a lot of purple tone in it so I think we'll stick to pewter of course, I love this pewter so much and I buy it by the vat that I've got. I've got it in my squeezy bottle. So we'll just kind of squeezy bottle some pewter onto, onto our, our surface using the same brush, no rinsing. We'll just kind of bring some of that down in between the trees, kind of roughly here, a little bit here. You still want to see your outline, but you do want to go right over those edges. And then we'll kind of work it back up into that navy, get it streaky like so, isn't that pretty? And so for those of you who are coming to the sled paint party at the Montclair Country Club next week on Friday, this is one of the projects we're gonna be doing. And of course the other one is the snowman, but I figured I might as well go live and show you guys this because if you wanna get, well, okay, first and foremost, that other party is all is all sold out. So if you really want to do sleds, you can always get the paint pack or the two pack from me, and then you don't even have to choose which design. You can do them both. All right. So I just added a smidge more of that paint because I don't really want to see the the wood the wood color 
coming through so much. All right. Beautiful. So look at that. Now we have this gorgeous kind of nice um, multi-tone blend. And I'm going to use just some of that pewter in here. Just kind of offload a little bit in the bottom portion. And what that does is it's going to help add some depth. Now we're going to come in with some white. Grabbing the DecoArt Americana Snow or Titanium White. And just kind of sploosh it on. Let's see what happens. I think I can get away with this with my same brush because we really offloaded most of that paint. Yeah, beautiful. And go a little bit higher up in there and needs more paint. And so we're allowing this paint to get, for lack of a better term, a little muddy. So do let me know if you guys are interested in the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in getting a two pack of these. I ship them anywhere in the, in the lower 48 of the United States. It's included in the price. And I can just pop the link in if you'd like it. All right, so that came out pretty, pretty solid colored. So I think I'm going to place this guy aside for a minute, maybe break out my little dryer. Let this guy dry a bit and then we'll come over it with a second layer. Ooh. Yeah, and so what I'm doing is giving it a minute to dry so that I can come back in and get a little bit more white on that. Okie dokie. And so now a little bit more white. Just kind of a a little streaky here, a little streaky there. And I'm going to squeeze, actually, this is a nice clean paper towel. We'll use the next one. We'll squeeze some of that off here in hopes that less blue comes out. And we'll just kind of work across it again. All right, that looks good. I think that works. Okie dokie. And it is multicolored. So let me see here. Let me put this guy down. I got too many hands doing too many things. So as we come up, you can kind of see, maybe you can see. I can kind of see. I don't know, Candy, can you see that? All right. <clears throat> well, we'll call that good for now. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this guy. Um, actually, let's get some stars in this guy. So the way we're going to do that is by placing, I'm going to dip the brush in my water, just the tip. I'm going to kind of plop it in in this, right? I just, I'm going for some kind of wet paint and then um, I'm going to get a little bit more white on my palette here, just a little. Kind of put the, put this guy in and again, just kind of work it, work it around. So it's a very, it's a very kind of wet gooey. And now I can literally, oh, I got scissors here. Let's do that. Nah. We'll take another paintbrush, right? Okay, here we go. Ready? Just chunk, 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 chunk. See how I'm just kind of tapping? So now I have a starry sky. Oh, I love that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Wow. Okay. That makes me happy. What does that sound? Oh, it's a car. Okay, great. So now I'm going to place this guy in the rinse bucket and just kind of let him sit. Moving on to the next piece, we're going to start getting the trees. So we can go with a dark green. There's a whole bunch of options you can choose. Um, all right, so these three are all very similar. You can see slight differences. Um, we have the evergreen, the Hauser dark green, and the black forest green. So I want you to feel like any old dark green you can find is good enough. It doesn't really matter. I've got a lot of the Black Forest, so I think I'll go with that. And Black Forest has been pretty easy to find recently, which I also like. So here's the first time we're actually going to squeeze some of this onto our palette. Big old hunk of chunk of green. I probably went overboard there. You know me, I'm going to put too much paint in my palette. What can I say? Then again, aren't we out? Oh, that's not the brush I want. Here we go. So this one I trimmed and when it's trimmed, it's great for stenciling, but not great for fluffy work. So we'll put him back. So grabbing another clean brush, or if you have time to rinse yours, dry it off all the things. Oh, Marsha says she does stars with a toothbrush. I've also done that. Um, I tend to 
spew paint everywhere when I go that way. So I find that I'm a little bit of a liability. So I have to, I have to kind of keep it simple. Crazy, right? All right. So now we have this nice dark green. And so we're going to kind of go in angled directions like so. We're just going to kind of come down this way. Just kind of get those, get that green filled in. And you're going to go back over, come out of the edges. And this is really almost like a triangle with just fluffy, with fluffy bits, right? So we're just going to kind of work with that. And keep going. Oh yeah, I definitely, definitely got enough. Actually not enough, maybe even. All right, so we got one there. I think I see the edges there. And we will get further definition on these shortly. We're just getting the basics in right now. So again, if you're interested in ordering a two pack, just let me know. Um, I did put, no, I didn't. Um, I can always put the, put the link, the ordering link in the comments if you like. I, uh, I, I, I totally sold out my sled, my sled paint party, which is super awesome. We really good. We're going to have a, such a great time with that next week. Uh, but I figured there were still some folks who wanted to do the sleds, but we just didn't have the capacity at the country club. So I figured if we can have them available and maybe a tutorial, then everybody can still have some fun. So you notice on these trees, we're trying to make sure that we maintain kind of some variation in terms of the height. We don't want them to all be the same or perfectly graded. We kind of want them to be tall, shorter, really short, a little taller, a little shorter. So it kind of naturally undulates along for lack of a better term. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of dab along here a bit. Uh, maybe smooth it a smidge. Yeah, we'll smooth it a smidge. And we'll, we'll fine tune that section right there in a little while, but I feel like we've got kind of the basics. Whoops, okay, I got some white in there, great. Well, I'll take some of that lightened one Maybe continue to dab a little bit of that lighter green in there. Okay, now we're gonna grab some black, sort of the lamp black or ebony from Deco Art Americana. And don't feel like you have to use these brands. I'm solely using these brands because one, I have them, and two, I trust the quality. So I'm taking that black and I'm just kind of mixing the green in to create a darker green. So hopefully you can see that the lighter the, the dark green and then the very dark green so come in and maybe darken up this guy here maybe this guy up front here and this is a very kind of simple elegant design we've got i love it and then we've got this guy here behind so we'll add a little bit of the the dark green to this guy too okay and then yeah that works right you're kind of getting the gist of it all right, let's see here. So again, comment sleds. If you're interested in picking up a set of these, you want me to ship them to you, I can totally do that. I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a quick, we'll offload it first. That's a lot, a lot of paint to put in my rinse water. Where's my offload book? Here it is. So, whoop, sorry, when you have a lot of extra paint on a brush, sometimes just kind of getting rid of it this way on like junk mail or something that's about to go in the trash or recycling. Old phone books are awesome for this. Just kind of makes the whole rinsing it and getting it cleaner faster much easier. So we'll put this guy in here. All right, I'm gonna go for one more chip brush, but I'm gonna go smaller now. And this is a one inch chip brush. I'm gonna come back in with a white. Actually, I need to make sure that we're dry. Otherwise, we're gonna have smushy smudge everywhere. So let's do that really quick. So I'm using my heat gun you really want to move it around quite a bit. If you hold it in one place for too long, what happens is you'll, you'll kind of burn your paint and it'll start to bubble up and get all nasty for lack of a better term. Then you just be unhappy. We don't want unhappy. Not at all. You can also use a hair dryer. I love this design. It looks so complicated and then it just comes together really, really quickly, which makes me happy. Okay. That look is looking pretty good. Now, one of the other cool things about these, um, 
these chip brushes is that they they tend to really give a lot of texture so there's parts of this that are got a little bit of that bumpy feel it's kind of nice all right so adding a smidge more white to my palette just because i've got this sort of watered down bluey stuff over here i'm gonna dip dip it in and then i'm gonna kind of offload a little bit and then we'll kind of oh you know what shoot i missed the top the top is going to be important so let me make sure we're not dragging weird green through there right and again, if you have any questions about this, let me know. I do have a number of these available for those of you who are interested. Actually, I would, when I say a number, I mean like I maybe have six of them. All right, so I'm going to smooth up right along here to kind of get a little bit more of the white going. Dipping back in, offloading. And now for this tree, because it has its overla overlapping bits, I'm going to actually start at the bottom and kind of Kind of dab and you notice i'm still maintaining the sort of um angled placing it down kind of at an angle now you can get as artisty as you like but think of yourself as almost working in kind of kind of an arc that kind of goes across like so but try not to let it be too even so they're going to be you know thick parts and skinny parts and kind of keep coming up here Getting that in there. Bum, 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 bum. A little bit of overlap there. Need to tune up down here where it kind of meets the. All right, so now we have a snowy tree. So we have just one snowy tree. If you're feeling it and you want to put some snow on another tree, maybe here or something, you're welcome to. Little tiny bits. I don't know. Kind of feeling, feeling crazy. I know it's not in the original design I showed off, but maybe a little. There you go. It's just a kiss. Just a kiss. And that is really almost a completely dry brush. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do just a tiny bit more right up here at the top. A couple little bits here. Bum, bum, bum. So it's almost like, so you start from the bottom and you kind of work your way up. It's almost in a zigzag kind of of arches. And that gives it kind of that, you know, variegated look of a, of a pine tree of a true evergreen. <clears throat> okay, so do I need this anymore? You know what? I feel like I've got too much green happening here. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. Just kind of smooth that a little. Smooth that a little. Sometimes I get impatient and I don't let stuff dry. Maybe get it a little bit whiter at the bottom. And again, I've got a lot of texture going on here. All right, I'm going to grab some sapphire blue and see what I can do. Just the idiotiest, bittiest kiss. And I need more white. I keep running out of the white. That's crazy, right? So the base of this comes together very, very pretty. Oh, and Marcia says it looks very organic. Thank you. All right, so mixing a little bit of that blue, it's got a smidge of shimmer. and just kind of spring in a little bit. And then I'm going to grab some white to kind of go over some of that so it's not too to in your face. And so again, if you decide that you want to get a two pack of these, um, I will provide a supply list, the traceable design. Um, I will make sure that I've downloaded this video and popped it on YouTube so that you have access to it and can come and rewatch it all you like. Because I know sometimes we're not comfortable doing the thing. All right, go ahead and rinse your chip brush. We are now done with chip brush. Woo, woo, it is time to get into the smaller details. So let's see, we're gonna get ourselves a nice round brush here. Um, I could call this a number two, but you know what? Just think of it as kind of round and small or medium or whatever. We're gonna paint ourselves a little, little star up here. And I lost my tracing, so I'm just gonna kind of freehand it. So I'm gonna do a straight line. I'm gonna do, make it kind of like a cross, but right in the middle, like so. Right, and then I'm going to do little lines out each side, a little bit like here. That's going to help me just know to kind of connect them and connect them, connect them. And here's where that smaller brush is really helpful. Oh, yep. Okay. And it's okay if it goes a little bit off the edge and into kind of the, the off the slats of the, of the, whatever this thing is called, sled. There we go. Now, 
we're not done yet. We do a little bit more here. So we'll do kind of like a little, a little peak coming out of here and make them shorter. Like so, and then we'll kind of just make a skinny triangle off of each of those. And now you have a wonderful, happy, shiny store. And then we've got a good white base coat there. Hey there, thanks for checking out. Hi. Things are going really well with us here. My daughter's off at her Girl Scout camping trip for Hogwarts, which I'm totally envious. I would love to go. My son is hanging out at the arcade with his friends for a party. Look at that star, isn't that great? I love it, I love it. All right, I'm good, I'm good, I swear. I just get a little excited. Okay, so now we're gonna do the Oh Holy Night. Now, I am really bad, really bad at lettering, but we're gonna see how we go. And I can kind of see my stuff, so I'm gonna bring it in here and I'm just gonna kind of follow. And here's where, you know, even if it's not perfect, it is in your handwriting and it just makes it kind of fun. Now, if you start getting bristles that kind of go and splay out in every which way, um, you will take your brush and kind of twist it in the paint to kind of rein those bristles back in. Let's see, we'll make the H tall. I can kind of see my tracing on this and I kind of can't. So I'm just getting the basic letters in. I will make them perfect except we're not we're not really into perfect around here oh holy all right oh it wants to go off the edge so we'll just kind of like really like that now you could do this with a paint pen if you had one it might be a whole lot less of a pain in in your neck okay where's my end here it is all right well Let's make the end big and kind of fun. And kind of go off. Where's my, okay, there it is. And again, on the traceable design that I will make sure that you have downloadable access to, it has it. So we could even come back in and retrace on it with some chalk just to get it to, to show up. Um, or you could wait for, you know, yourself being in a, in a good mood <laughs> to do this. Now, lettering sometimes puts me in a very bad mood, but it just looks so good with it, so I have to do it. All right, I think there's a, it's gotta be an H around here somewhere, right? H. I'm gonna drop the H a little bit, drop the tail, and then I'm gonna kind of bring this guy here. And then we will swoosh the T. All right, so it says, oh, holy night. Now I, I can come in here and do all sorts of tweaking on this, make it much prettier, which we'll probably do. Maybe even come over it with some uh, with some gold. I don't really know, you guys can decide. All right. So we have the words on it. And again, you can spend as much time on this or as little as you like. It's gonna be up to you. If you have paint pens, let me see if I have one I can show off. So my little tub of all the things over here. Do I, do I, do I? All right, well, oh, oh, there it is. Okay. So you have to wait until the paint is totally dry if you're gonna use a paint pen. I just put wet paint there so I can't come in over it with a paint pen right now. But I absolutely love the Artistro markers. This is a medium point. It's like two to three millimeters and um, it's just fabulous for, for marking. Let's see, do I have something? Shoot, no, I dropped my brush and it landed on the hardwood floor. Paint bristles down, of course, because you know, that's that's how we do things around here. That is how we do things around here. All right, so let me see. I'm gonna look for something I can just kind of draw on here. I will, no, that's so wet. We'll grab the black version of this guy so you can see. And it's wonderful because you can just, you know, literally Get your paint in there. It's almost like using a Sharpie, only it's acrylic paint. So again, it's the Artistro uh, paint marker pen, medium point. I get this on Amazon. I absolutely love them. I use them in a lot of my mixed media and stuff. So these could also be amazing, probably for if you wanted for like doing some 
some snow if you wanted to do snow coming down. But I'll show you another way of doing the snow. But I just want you to see that there's options. But let's first go ahead and give this a little bit of a, a heat dry. And then if you want, we can add some gold ornaments and turn this guy gold. And then I would be interested to see, do you guys think we should also do, um, do the Oh Holy Night in gold or keep it, or keep it white? I'm a little bit, I'm a little on the fence. I don't know. So I'm also just going to make sure that those little snow snowflakes that I just did with my pen are dry so that I don't smush them everywhere with my forearm. Cause you know, that's, that's how we roll around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and while I'm at it, let me put the link in for ordering slides in case you guys want some. Whoop. Come on, let's see this. And then, here we go. Maybe it went. Yep. Okay, I should try the gold. Okay, cool. Let me just make sure these, these little guys dry. Come on, dots. Because you know I'm going to have like weird comments if I'm not careful. All right. So if you're watching from the Montclair uh, virtual craft fair, I don't know if the link showed up or not. I can always come in and paste it again. So let's get some, let's get our gold here. I've got some space still left on this. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze out a, a hunk of that. So what the heck gold am I using? There's two options. One is the tub and it's the, the gold version of this guy here, the metallics from Deco Art Americana. It's matte finish and it's wonderful. That's actually what's in this tub here, this guy. Oh yeah, see, I, I sort of, I sort of labeled it. The other option, which is just as wonderful, but it's a little bit, a little bit warmer tone is the Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold. In fact, I can probably squeeze a little bit on that. Let me shake it. Shake, 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 shake your paint tub, shake your paint tub. Yeah, that needed more shaking. So if these things sit for a while, um, they do start to separate, as is the case with all paints. So this one you can kind of see the um, this the liquid suspension plus the plus the um, the pigment. And so this one actually has slightly larger pigment pieces. It's also a little bit warmer. It's almost okay. So I know you just see gold, but this one is a little bit pinker, and this one is a little bit greener. Can you see that? Yeah, gold. Oh, I just want to like put it on my face and okay don't mind my weird fetishes it's not a fetish but you know what I mean like I just get so excited about some of our materials I'm like, they're so great they're so great so I'm gonna stick to the tub stuff because the other stuff didn't come out as plain where'd my brush go oh here it is so I rinsed it sort of while I was chit-chatting I'm now gonna squeeze the water out of it in my paper in my paper towel that way I'm not dragging extra water around so we'll go ahead and get some of this gold and just come on here and sort of fill in. So I start in the center and I put like a big glop on and then I'm literally just kind of dragging that gold right up over top of the, the white. And oftentimes this stuff is pretty close to single, single layer, which is why I like it so much because it, it doesn't require like six coats. There's a lot of cheap gold paint out there a lot of cheap gold paint. <laughs> oh my gosh, sometimes I let a little too much of my personality show on these lives, huh? I'm like, wait, what's up on my face? <sighs> well, you know, if you're here, you might as well just let your freak flag fly, right? Not that it's all that freaky, but you know, we're all, we all got our weird somehow. I mean, and of course my name starts with a W. So as you can imagine growing up, I was always weird Wendy. You even made a, made a garbage pail kid card after me. Oh yeah. Just getting that gold in. So I'm really starting in the middle and then just gently kind of dragging, dragging it out in a way to kind of fill the spot. Now, if we want, we can also put some gold some gold bubbles on the tree, which I think would be fun. So maybe just kind of little circles, just kind of dabbing them in. 
because why not, right? Somebody like snuck out in the middle of the night and put gold baubles on the tree out in the wild. That's totally how it works, right? Mmm, mmm. This gold makes me happy. This gold makes me happy. This gold makes me happy. And I'm gonna have a lot of extra left. So I'm gonna need to find something in my house to paint gold. Oh, here's a question for you guys. Or I'm I'm curious, is anybody here into nutcrackers? Because I will tell you, like I grew up, my mom like was nutcracker crazy. She loved the Steinbox. We had like 50 of them all over the house, and I absolutely hated nutcrackers. And my mom's like, oh yeah, when I pass on, you're gonna get my nutcracker collection. And I'm like, oh dear God, somebody saved me. But like something happened this year and I'm like, is it just like a middle age thing? I don't know. Like, or, or I finally saw a pink nutcracker and I was like, ah. so I have realized the difference between me liking nutcrackers and not liking nutcrackers is they need to be pink. If they're pink, I'm all over it. If they're not pink and they're in those like, you know, standard, you know, blue, green, red, they're not into it. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm going to like find my way to Michael's, get a paintable, paintable nutcracker or something and go like little pink crazy. I do like pink a lot. Okay. So that's kind of fun, right? Look at that. So the best part, and this looks even cooler when it dries, but that gold, it utterly catches the light and the sheen. Okay. Now we will try to do the gold over the Oh Holy Night. Oh you God, make this work. Bracelet, actually, let me take the bracelets off just so I can really kind of get get on in here. I'm gonna come on down. I call this this view of me, you know, check out her roots. Are they good? Are we good? Are we all good? Okay. I'm just gonna bring it along. Yeah, oh that gold is fun. And that's good because I've kind of got the white there to help to help show me where everything is. So you want to go real light with your, oh, oh, I got some gold on my arm and I got some gold on my thing. Told you, it happens every time. So I'm going to dip paper towel, just a corner in some water. My baby wipes around here somewhere, which is, by the way, like number one best awesomest thing to use. But because this stuff is dry and we kind of focused on getting it dry, I should be able to remove most of that gold. Most of it, oops, I created a bald spot, so we'll have to fix that. We'll fix that. We'll fix it. I don't even know where that gold came from. I don't think I got into it. Wow, well, it's cool. It happens. All right, so coming down, down here. And again, you can be as meticulous as you like on this. Slow and steady kind of wins the race when it comes to hand lettering with a brush. And sometimes sort of the, the liner brushes or the ones with the really long bristles tend to give even better results because you can kind of swoosh them and do like calligraphy style. Whereas with these slightly shorter to medium bristle um, stuff, there's a lot more, um, I don't know. There's just something in a way that like the, the pigment really flows when you're using really long bristle brushes. Um, but so you could also I forgot to mention this, get yourself a really good gold paint pen. Um, and again, I'm going to recommend the Artistro oil-based um, gold and silver paint pen pack. It comes in like a pack of 12. I love them. I do not get any kind of compensation for loving them or anything. I just love them. Although I think I did get my very first pack of them free as a bonus because they were trying to get people to try them out but I put them on my Amazon subscribe and save. <laughs> so I get a shipment of them like regularly cause they're so great. And they're really fun, you know, especially if you're not feeling comfortable with your, with your brush strokes for, Oh, you're just a gooey gold. Oh no, oh no, oh no. All right, good, it fell in between the cracks. I had like the full on like gooey Spider-Man web of gold coming off. I was like, no, don't land on my, on my design. <laughs> Yeah, 
so I'll just sort of say I don't really get compensated to to recommend products. So if I'm saying I love something, it's because I love something. It would be nice if I could get compensated for saying I love stuff I love, but you know, it doesn't matter. We're just here to have fun. All right. This is pretty much the design, very, very simple. And you can really get it done in, you know, under an hour. And then you can sort of spend the rest of that time uh, once you've got the basic piece completed. You can um, you can paint the, the rails of the sled. In fact, I should probably I should probably do that. I was so excited about doing the main part of the sled that I forgot to do. Forgot to do the rails and the kick plate or whatever it is. You know that thing for steering that you kind of you sit on the sled and you put your feet on. Not that I've ever been on a real sled. These are just fun decorative sleds. Like you know. American Girl doll might be able to use this, but I wouldn't recommend letting this get out in the water. And if you are going to have this outside on a door, make sure that you spray seal it with like spar urethane or something like, um, like a Rust-Oleum clear enamel. This one's matte finish, which just means you'll see the painting. You can totally also get glossy, whatever suits you. I do like this stuff. Um, but the, the spar urethane, um, I think it's also Rust-Oleum. I don't remember. Or it's mini wax, whatever. Oh yeah, it's the mini wax. Sorry. Um, that stuff is meant for outdoors. And so it's a little bit softer for lack of a better term, which means that as it, things get warm and cold, they, they sort of expand and contract. It's designed for that. So it doesn't crack just in case you were wondering why there's outdoor versus indoor stuff, the outdoor stuff has to be more flexible because of the temperature changes. There's your physics lesson for the day. Oh, I got a big old gold blap. That's fine. So this is really helpful, not trying to do the gold directly, but to have kind of something to just sort of trace over and cover and smooth. And again, I am putting slightly larger blops on this and then just kind of dragging the paint. So then, you know, if you are putting kind of blops down and then dragging the paint, think about where you're placing those blops. Kind of be strategic about it. Like a, a natural end point. Oopsies. Or like a dip. All right, well, that came out pretty good. Look at that. Now we get some good shimmer. Shimmer, shimmer, shake. All right. Cool beans. Okay. Offload this somewhere. I'll put it on the cover of my little manga book already got my gold collection going. It's so pretty. I think one day this thing will be all gold. But again, this is very thin coating because I keep like, whatever, I'm dabbling. I'm dabbling, it's cool. So I'm gonna come back, and actually now that we had rinsed this guy and called him good, because I forgot, I'm gonna squeeze a lot of that water back into the, the paint, the, the paint water, and then squeeze as much of the paint water out as possible. And then use the paper towel to really dry it, dry it, dry it. Okay, good deal. And move this guy over here out of the way for just a minute. I tell you, I need like four desks, not just one and a little guy. Because I've always got like way too much stuff going on. Okay, and now here we have the the kick plate thing. And we'll just go ahead and get him navy blue really quick. I'm just going to... Come on. Squeeze directly from the tube because, you know, it's easy. Yeah, okay, so I'm just testing the brush. It's, it's, it's only slightly damp, it's fine. So it should be able to spread that out pretty well. And I think for consistency sake, also going to give this guy a little bit of that splatter paint thing. And you can also do the rails. I'm not going to do those on camera. I'm not sure that's going to be the most interesting thing to see. And if you want, you can get all around the edges and the sides of this. This is a really rich, beautiful navy. I honestly prefer the, the folk art um, navy blue paint to the Deco Art Americana one, just because I feel like it has a thicker, thicker coating. It is, however, going to cost you more. Um, 
it's not a whole lot more but it is a little bit more expensive but I, I do like the quality on that a little better so there we have our basic navy pop it back in bring this wet guy out the other one and give it kind of a light squeeze we still want it to be a little little wet a little little juicy is that weird maybe Dapping in the white okay i'm hoping this is good let's find out and we'll give it a little So everyone's going to have different methods. Um, Marsha earlier mentioned that she uses a toothbrush and you can kind of, you would still get the same level of kind of wet paint on and then you'd kind of use your thumb to kind of spray it. However, mine always ends up having a, a very distinct spray thing where it looks like someone kind of splattered. And so for me, I personally get a much more even coating this way. So that's really going to be personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's going to be what way works with you and your style. Again, I often mention I'm very heavy handed with stuff. So like when it comes to stenciling, if there's a pouncer, I'm going to be like squash, 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 and the paint's going to all go under the stencil. So I have to be kind of this delicate tap, 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 tap in order to get it right. Okay. So we'll bring this guy back. Oh, and you know, we, we were going to keep going with the snow. So to get some good dots, we start, we did the paint pen, but let me show you how we do it without the paint pen. You would take the tail or the boute of your brush, make sure it's a nice round one, dip it in the in the paint and pretty much dot it in. And so for this one, because we kind of want to, we want it to come out pretty each time, you really are going to want to dot in the paint every single time. If you're using a thicker paint, like a, um, a heavy body uh, acrylic paint, like in a tube, you can probably get away with two to three dots, but when you're using a bottle paint, like this guy here, it's, it's much runnier, which is fine because it's still fantastic, but you're going to need to use, you're going to need to dot every single time. So dip, dot, dip, dot. That's what I meant. So make sure that those snowflakes are kind of coming down right over your trees. We'll let the Oh Holy Night kind of be in front of that. And maybe a few dots even on your tree, even on the snowy tree. So it's a, it's not totally obvious, but up close when you're looking at it, it will make more sense to the brain if, it, if it's there. So do your best to not create a pattern. Humans naturally gravitate towards patterns. In fact, mine kind of looks like polka dots right now. So in order to kind of mix that up, I'm going to put a few of them close to each other that's how things happen in nature they kind of clump and fall so anywhere that you feel like you've kind of got you've kind of got like too much pattern going on add a couple so here i actually didn't dip every single time and they got a little smaller and i almost kind of made like a little like a little uh tail of stuff kind of happening so there you go and that makes it a little it's more natural right we're going for organic. Let's see. And Marsha said, yeah, it looks very organic. That was for something else. I know. So I'll move that guys. Oh, I forgot here. I'm like, babble, 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 happy, happy, happy. I'm going to put some of the white snow on this, on this as well. Cause it's in, can you see that? No, not really. Come on, Wendy. So it's not showing up real well on camera, but just a few extra snowflakes coming down. Okay. I like it. I'm good. So we'll set this guy aside again. Maybe I can just put him right here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then this guy, we'll get a couple more of those um, snowflakes on. Now remember, the snow is going down this way. So again, keeping your, your big dots in there. A couple of them grouped. You out this way. Oh, this kind of looks like stars, kind of looks like snow, kind of looks like flurries. I don't know. Things they want to go skiing like right now. Anybody else? So now I just have to like figure out how to make sure I've got good Wi Fi for all my ski trips so I can like 
go live and film and all this stuff. All right, I think if I do any more snowflakes on this guy, it's gonna be overkill. I like to go overkill, I always do. I can't help being extra. I was born that way. And this guy, and so let's see if we can get to see, sort of see how it all lines up. There we go, isn't that pretty? I love it. And so again, if you wanted to do these guys, I recommend probably navy just because it will be, it'll kind of stay on theme. So I think since we're here, I will just go ahead and make a maybe. And you're gonna have to, this is also an act of patience, right? You're gonna to wanna to do one side and then the other side. And because it's so skinny, I am gonna go with a smaller, a smaller chip brush. Where'd I, where I put my palette? It's right here somewhere. Oh, there it is. You guys, I tell ya, ADHD is a thing. All right, come on, squeeze navy blue. I'm just squeezing some on. Okay, so we'll do just one side for now, so you have a sense of it. And then again, if you're like, hey, that's cool, you would let this one side dry, and then you'd come around and do the other side. Just getting it kind of nicely coated there. So a thing to think about is each of the holes for these things, like if you kind of go around, actually I think where I was trying to go with this is for this guy, because it's going to be seen also up and down, you may want to think about kind of getting the edges kind of in here. And I'll worry about the insides, the opposite side later, right? We're just going to do one side for now. Um, but because it is going to be viewed kind of top down, some of these pieces here. Now in here, uh, yeah, in here, we'll get it blue, but from all this section here will not be seen. So you don't have to paint it. Make sure you get the tops. Otherwise you're going to have little brown pegs sticking out and it might look funny. The bottom here one is going to want to be white. Oh, can you see that? Or you can keep it blue and it'll just be a blue peg in the thing. doesn't matter. It's, it's going to be up to you. Here we go. So the question is, now that we've done this, do you also want to see the snowman? I'm not going to do the snowman like right now, but there's always tomorrow. And I can always go live again if you want. This is really, oh my God, I tell you, this is so much fun. You know, it's like you get that sense of like making something. I mean, yes, painting is awesome and really cathartic. But something about like, doing the sledge, which I then get to assemble and have this like super cute thing. Like, I don't know, it's even more cathartic. It kind of like, it kind of like scratches that maker itch. Anybody else ever feel that way? Like you just want to like make all the things or you see them like, oh, I could do that. Well, this is your opportunity to actually, you know, follow up on that. Oh, I could do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Grab yourself some, a two pack of sleds, maybe a friend. You guys could totally do the Oh Holy Night sled. Or the snowman. Or any other Christmas design. I mean, you know, you could totally do Frosty on your sled. That would be super cute. I have that tutorial available. And all you have to do is write Frosty in the comments and I'll get it for you. You could do the no oh, you could do the gnomes on the sled. How fun would that be? Some crazy gnomes. These are the nomads. I also have a tutorial for the boy gnomes. Um so the, the sky's the limit. And so if you do end up ordering ordering this, you just let me know which um, which designs you want. Um, I can make them available to you and it comes with a video. So this is this is one of them. Oh, I'm running a little low on the blue paint. Now we'll kind of get the inside here because it's gonna show top bit here. Now I think if I assemble this while the paint is wet, it'll probably stick together and stay solid for like ever. So I may wait to get it fully assembled. But there you have it. So now you have these pretty, oops, I forgot that section right there. The little curvy curvature part. It just makes it a nice clean look. 
All right, let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Okay, don't forget to rinse. Don't forget to rinse. I mean, these chip brushes are not expensive. So if you're like, hey, where do I get chip brushes? You can get them at Michael's. If you want to buy like 50 or 100 of them, you can get them on Amazon. All right. So I think we're good here. Pop this guy in. Paint is going to make it extra sticky. Yeah. So I didn't paint this tip right, right here. I could. And so you're going to decide, do you want this disassemblable or do you want it permanently assembled? And it may just be like, you know, thinking practically, you know, if you're assembling, you know, for, you have this for Christmas every year, do you want to just leave it assembled or do you want to be able to pack it away? Would you want to paint it and send it as a gift to a family member? Then not assembling it is a good idea. And so you may just want to separately paint the different pieces, but oops. Okay. Here we are, and now we have our sled. Isn't it gorgeous? I absolutely love this. All right, let's see here. So, all right, I'm just gonna go solo on camera. Actually, no, I'm not. I can't figure this stuff out. I like halfway get the technology. So anyways, here you guys go. Isn't it cute? I love it. I love it. And so um, there's some holes like right in here on either side where you could, er, let's see. There, I can see it. Some holes right here, so you could string like, like a ribbon to hang it up. Uh, put it on your door. You could attach it to a wreath with some wire. Um, if you do, now again, if you're gonna have it outside on a wreath hanging up, you really may want to consider assembling it with some glue. Oh, you know what else we could do? Let's do this. Let's do this. We need glitter. We need glitter, right? Anybody else? We need glitter. All right. So I got two options. One of the Craft Smart and the Twinkles. I think I'm going to start with the Craft Smart. It's a very fine coat. I'm just going to squeeze some on here. Plop this guy in the rinse section. And I'm just going to grab a brush. Here's a brush. And get a fat brush just because it's easier. Let's see if I can see it. Get this on camera again. And here we go. We're now just kind of moving the glitter there. Now, you can't really say it yet, but it will be superbly glittery shortly uh oh <laughs> all right i think this guy's staying assembled because i'm like painting the glitter right over those little holes and i could probably even just dab some glitter because i got a little extra here dab some glitter in on my tree because it's fun so of course if you're coming to my paint party i'm gonna have the glitter paint ready and waiting for you which we'll put on kind of at the end a little bit of glitter on this guy too um, just for just for giggles okay now if i heat dry this we should be able to see let's see let's see now i painted on the back side of this guy um if, when you get your kit you want to make sure you paint on the front side and you'll be pretty obvious because the front side has fewer burn marks. The back side has got more burn marks. Because again, these are all precision laser cut, which means they'll all be exactly the same. There's gonna be no variation. Um, yeah. I love the smell. It's like when you open the box, um, you can just sort of smell that sort of burned wood smell. I love it. Of a dork there, but I do love it. Okay, so now my glitter is mostly dry. A couple spots that aren't, but let's see. Can we catch? Can we catch the glitter? Can we catch the glitter? The shimmer? I just have to come over to my house and see it. I can kind of see it. Adds a little bit of a gloss finish to it too, and you can kind of see the sky over here doing a little shine. But there it is. Isn't that fun? So again, if you want the two pack. I put the link in, in the comments, or you can just comment sleds and I can get you or, or two pack, whatever, something. So I know that you're interested and I can make sure that I reply to you with a link and, um, we'll go from there. So I can ship them pretty much anywhere in the United States. And it's the two pack for 67 bucks, which is not bad considering when people come to my paint party, it's 45 bucks a person. Um, and this just allows you to do any kind of design you want. 
I will send you the electronic files so that you can literally print the tracer. Um, I'll send you some optional videos, or if you tell me, hey, you know, I really want your, your frosty design for the sled, I will make sure that you get that. Otherwise, it'll naturally come with the Oh Holy Night and the um, Snow Much Joy, not Snow Much Joy, the Joyful Snowman, which I don't have a sample on hand right now, but I can, we'll get one up. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining me. This has been so much fun. And I, I'm like, it's November. Can I hang this on my front door yet? Can I? Can I? Can I? I don't really know. I love you. And I will see you next time. Bye.